which will be about $80,000 here, $3,000 in Great Britain. And I'm going to do that someday. But two and a half years ago, when I saw the airline stewardess coming down the aisle with this belt extender, seat belt extender, I thought, oh my God, she's coming to my seat. And everybody in this plane knows it. I could hardly fit in that seat. The seat belts would never go around me. I couldn't sit in a booth in a restaurant. I'd have to sit at a table and push the chair way away so I could fit. It was embarrassing. I'd spent maybe $50,000 in diets, pills, legal methamphetamine, pregnant bear urine, gonadotropin that was shot into my hips because this was supposed to change your metabolism and make you lose weight. Every diet from the Atkins to the protein sparing fast and many, many others where I nearly killed myself on diets. And as soon as I'd stop, I'd gain it all back plus a few dozen pounds. So we have to say, why in the world did this thing that I built for about $20 make me lose all of this weight, make my hair grow back? I used to be bald on top. I had a fringe around the outside, and I have photographs of this too. When I put this together as a slideshow, you'll see me before and after. I'm in my 70s now, but I feel like I'm 30 years old. We won't even talk about my libido. <laughs> but the point is that this works. And all we did was do something that is verboten to medicine. We did not use drugs. We did not use penicillin, ampicillin, antibiotics. We simply put this small 50 millionths of an ampere through your blood, and that literally neutralized every single adversary in that blood that didn't belong there. It's that simple. How did we lose weight? How did Jane lose the weight? How did many of our friends lose it? Not all, about 30%. This works. The parasites, which have been found in the intestines of the apes that were fossilized, were frozen in north polar ice caps, etc., like dinosaurs, had learned to change one of the P in the 50 series, DNA, in our apostates, the hypothalamus, put the listin into your body, which forced you to eat. Why? So they would eat, for the same reason that we send cattle to a feedlot and fatten them up before we put them on the market. Those parasites have learned to control our apostate in the hypothalamus to the point where we will overeat. And I'm here to tell you something that you might not have realized until this moment. It is not what you eat that causes weight loss or weight gain. It is not. Any of you who have ever been on a diet know this. It is how much of what you eat that these aliens store for their own meal next time that makes the difference. And when I got those boogers out of my system, and you can prove this with any doctor who has a dark field microscope, Jane and I are two of the 17 people now who apparently have a mortal blood, and I'll tell you this story, it's fascinating. When they're out of there, baby, your body goes back to your optimum weight. You were maybe 20 years old and in college or high school, just out of high school. Okay, let me do that. It eliminates through the kidneys, the liver, the bowel, the lymph system, We'll talk about that. It's in the paper, yes. <clears throat> One woman who was doing this had uh, Epstein-Barr chronic fatigue syndrome so badly that she hadn't been out of the house in maybe a year and a half. After she'd done this for three weeks, she was feeling so well that she decided to run down to the corner drugstore and get some makeup. On the way back, she had a tremendous urge to get to the bathroom as soon as possible. She stepped off the curb, got to the middle of the street, uh-oh, and a big mass of worms. <laughs> oh, God. So she took off like gangbusters. We've had worms come out of people's eye sockets. You're nodding. You've, you've seen this. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> We're literally loaded. <coughs> Pardon me a second.
Here I've got a perfectly good PA system that I'm screaming at. By the way, Paul de Clark is selling a device called the Synchro Zephyr. Anyone in here heard about it? You hold it in your palms. It simply does not work, cannot work. The way you measure the current in your blood <coughs> you take the altar path where you can feel the pulse. I'm going to take this off now. You've all seen it. You stick a hypodermic needle into the blood itself, measure the IR drop, the resistance. I is current, R is resistance, E is voltage, I equal E over uh, I equal ER, or E equal R. The point is that you can measure that in the blood. If you measure all the Clark's device, which we've done, there is no current going into the blood whatsoever. As a placebo, it is wiping out the radionic response of the parasites in the system. You need that 50 microamperes through the blood, and if you can't measure it, boys and girls, it isn't there. And you don't need a surgeon to open up your vein every two months and change the little device that was described in this patent. <clears throat> you can do it yourself. It costs less than the price of a package of chewing gum, and that covers the batteries for a three-week supply of nine-volt cells. And the circuit is published. Yes, sir? Where is the other side of that circuit, that, that small IR drop uh, measure that? Is it at the end of the hand? We put the electrodes on the ulnar radio and the brake wheel here. Yeah. That's putting the electricity. The blood is 700 times more conducting than the flesh, the fat, subcutaneous sebaceous. That path goes up to here, comes down the other side, goes through the hand, there are two paths for the hand because the creator considered that important to use, and if one of them is occluded, you can still fight or flight. And you measure the IR drop about six inches apart and the brachial over. That's where you do it. Is that described in your literature? It's fully described in the literature. Anything you're likely to ask here tonight is included in this paper, which has about $50,000 worth of research in it. And God, I wish I'd had it five years ago before I tackled this job. <laughs> I paid for this out of my own pocket, which is, proves that I don't have to change the results to comply with some pharmaceutical houses or tobacco industries protocols. <clears throat> this brings up a whole lot of questions. Now let's suppose you have a cure-all, which you do, how are you going to stay out of jail when you use it? How many people in this room have looked at a menu in the last month? What's this restaurant got to eat? Let's see it. Come on. That's it. I hereby pronounce you researchers. Yeah. <laughs> now let me read you some little known federal laws that most health professionals have never heard of them. We're reading from the Code of Federal Regulations, Book 21, Article 807.65, subpart D, exemptions. We're on page four of your paper. You don't have to make any notes tonight. <coughs> Exempt from regulation. That means city, county, state, municipal, the FDA, Food and Drug Administration. Exempt from regulation. This is freedom, boys and girls. You're going to take back your power now. Paragraph D, we're on page four. <clears throat> Licensed practitioners, including physicians, dentists, and optometrists, to manufacture or otherwise alter devices solely for use in their practice. Paragraph F, persons who manufacture, prepare, propagate, compound, or process devices solely for use in research. Now, aren't we all here researching life, everything around us? What do we eat that makes us feel good? And what gives us hives and asthma? 